Welcome back to Gold Fries. In this video, I'll be sharing my experience and findings as I attempted to overclock the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X. But before that, a huge thank you to all of you for watching my previous videos, those that I published before this one about the AMD Ryzen 5000 series. The numbers are certainly encouraging and I hope you'll subscribe to this channel if you haven't because as a tiny channel, being a one-man production team like myself, I could surely use the support from your clicks on the, especially on the subscribe button. And if you click the notification button, that'll be great too, as we have, I have more things to come. Now let's get into the details. I'll be referring to the tablet as um, quite, there are quite some points to cover. So I'll be including benchmarks, benchmark numbers of the seven games that I used, no recording this time. It's quite pointless because um, yeah, the, the chart will surface. Now in the chart later, I will show you the five settings used. The first one being the Ryzen 5 5600X on the typical memory setting of 3200MHz CL16. A very common speed and timing for um, memory kits. Second one being the one that I use tuned a bit, meaning that I use the same kit, load the the other profile, which is the highest speed profile of 3600 CL14, and then I change the speed from 3600 to 3733. Sub timings untouched. And then the, there are the other settings, the third and the fourth one, of which I overclock the processor to 4.7 gigahertz and 4.8 gigahertz. And the last one is something of more like the enthusiast kind of setting meaning that at 4.8 gigahertz at the 3733CL14, I even went on to tighten the sub timings. Now this is something advanced, which most of the users will not do, but since we are at this topic, I thought I might as well get the numbers done. So this should give you an experience of what sort of baseline you can achieve. And I want to make this clear that the unit I have is a sample from AMD. So keep in mind that your unit, being retail unit, if it works better than what you see here, that does not make this sharing wrong. This is after all my sharing, my experience. Just understand the context of this sharing rather than nitpicking. nitpicking. Yeah, some of you actually do that. I I'm aware of this. So note that also this benchmark is using the RTX 3070. So your mileage will vary when you use a different graphics card, like a higher end one like 3080 or 3090 or even the lower end models. So keep that in mind. Now let's begin. The highest speed I could reach is 5 gigahertz, but I could only see the Windows loading screen. At 4.85 gigahertz and 4.9 gigahertz, I could reach the desktop, but games will not run. It's not a temperature issue because I'm using a Be Quiet Pure Loop 240mm. And at the time of the crash, the temperature reading was below 85 degrees Celsius. So certainly not that. The voltage was at 1.4. I could go 1.5, but the temperature will be a lot higher. And unfortunately, I do not have any beefier cooler to test out this one. And then at 4.8 gigahertz, it actually works just fine. Um, I'm using 1.3 recall. The reading was good. Even if I run the blender test, it'll be just about 40, 76 degrees Celsius. All games completed, no issue. I mentioned about the sub timings part. So here are the numbers for those of you who are interested. These numbers are not the highest, definitely. I, as you can see, well, this is the timing that I use after loosening it. See, I actually was running at a much tighter timing than, uh, I wouldn't say much, it's a slightly tighter timing than this. However, only four out of the seven games passed. Um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, The Division 2, and Horizon Zero Dawn refused to complete the, the benchmark. So I had to loosen it just a little bit by a few, a few numbers and I got it to run. So, just bear in mind that this is not a completely stable memory setting because note that I'm an overclocker and I'm not unfam unfamiliar with getting these timings, these changes, but literally there's no time to super duper fine tune all these settings to maximum stability and run HDI mem test for hours just to, uh, just to get this running. So this is um, basically I'm not the type of overclocker that spends countless hours, weeks, months to do tuning. So anyway, let's look at the numbers. Metro Exodus seems to be the only one with numbers unchanged. Same goes with Horizon Zero Dawn where the higher settings are within the margin of error. In fact, actually everything's within the margin of error. As you can see, um, 
the address of the titles, some gains are more significant. Now, whether you actually benefit from these very little gains, you know, some of the some of the result you saw in the chart, it's just like 1% increase. So that one, one frame, every frame increase could actually mean um, the 1% lows being better. So 1% lows being better could mean um, better experience in your gaming session. However, looking at that, at all the average frame rate being, being at three digits of number, I don't think the 1% lows matter that much because they'll be very high as well. And some of you might be wondering why am I not showing the 1% low numbers? Well, again, short of time. So I'm just using the in-game benchmark average. After all, when, I'm, when I drafted this thing, it's at 4 a.m. So at the time of this recording, it's much closer to dawn already. And it's on the Sunday morning, which is weekend. I should be sleeping. So all in all, with this effort put in, I hope you enjoyed the content or at least gained some information out of this. And do remember to subscribe to this channel because I heard that the Ryzen, did I say Ryzen? No, I mean the Radeon RX 6000 could be heading my way. So anyway, all in all, the purpose of this chart is to show you the varying experience you can get with the various setup. So to me, um, it works great out of the box regardless of um, memory speed you choose. Of course, um, if you want speed boost, feel free to overclock, overclock settings on the, an AMD system is easy. Just change the clock speed and adjust the voltage until you find it stable. However, some of you already have or may want to purchase high speed, low latency memory kit. You will benefit from it. Even a little bit, sure, you will get as from my charts, you will see some gains. It's very slight. So it's a matter of whether you are willing to spend that money for that very, very slight gain. And if you're already spending on a high-speed memory kit, might as well spend a bit more time to fine-tune the sub-timings to gain just a little bit more. So with that, that's all for now. Thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.